morning to everybody. First of all, I would like to welcome His Excellency Ambassador Edwin Chatwan to our university here. It is our pleasure to have you here. And last night I met you uh, in the reception and you told us that you have a kind of historical um, correlation with us. Uh, uh, you were born in um, uh, South Africa and your mother was originally from Indonesia. So, well, compared to your uh, original hometown. <laughs> and uh, we are delighted also to hear from your experience. And I think uh, we are happy to, to help Ambassador because uh, Ambassador Jadwar is a, is a uh, practicing Muslim in Australia and now become one of the top leaders in the Australian government. And he's be, become the special envoy to Organization of Islamic Cooperation. And now he also ambassador for Saudi in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. So I think we can learn something from uh, from his expertise, from his experience, and also from his knowledge about uh, about the relationship between Indonesia uh, and Australia, and also uh, uh, Islamic country in in broader sense. So uh, once again, thank you, ambassador, for your coming here, and also I would like to welcome. Uh, Deputy Chief Vision uh, uh, Alistair Koch uh, uh, for your second time to be here. Uh, I think two or three months ago you provided lecture in front of our students and uh, some interesting questions on the role of uh, Australia in the Middle East. One of the, well, the questions is why Australia support uh, the move of Ambassador uh, Embassy to Jerusalem. Uh, uh, and we have a very interesting discussion issues at that time. So, um, without further ado, uh, um, I would like to introduce uh, Ambassador Kuman Jatwa. He was born in 19, uh, 19 May 1972, very young. I already knew the Ambassador. And uh, present position, Australian Ambassador to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Australia's non-resident Ambassador to Oman, Bahrain and Yemen, Australia's Special Envoy to Organization of Islamic Cooperation Wise. So once again, uh, uh, Ambassador Tuan Chatwa was born in South Africa and he has a, a blood of Indonesian uh, mother. Uh, so once again, welcome Ambassador and we are delighted to hear for your speech. Thank you. Terima kasih. <laughs> Near the Durban beachfront. 
And because of the segregated lives that we were forced to live, he was the first white person that I would have a conversation with. The fear was palpable, but our fears evaporated almost immediately as we were introduced. I don't remember his name, but I do recall that this official was warm and friendly and funny. He made us relax by talking about cricket and about how open Australia was to immigrants from around the world. He said Australia needed a diverse range of people and that we shouldn't worry too much about fitting in. This embassy official gave us hope that we could become Australians. And a few months later, we were informed that our family had been accepted and that we could settle in Australia in 1981. That first encounter with Australian diplomacy and espousal of Australian values was a life-changing experience for me and for my family. This Australian official was the first Australian that I had ever met, and he had made a very positive impression on all of us. He reflected the values that make our country strong and united, and he introduced us to the character of a country that has welcomed 7.5 million immigrants and 850,000 refugees since World War II. Our nation's story began 65,000 years ago with our first Australian, the oldest continuous human civilization. This endurance of human life and caring for country is both profound and inspiring. We are a country in which 28% of Australians were born overseas and around 50% of Australians have a parent born overseas. We come from nearly 200 countries and speak almost 400 languages, including our indigenous languages. More than 3 million people speak a language other than English at home. Freedom of religion and belief are central to our multicultural model. Over 130 religious traditions are observed in Australia, including over 600,000 Muslims who call Australia home. Islam's presence in Australia actually predates European settlement. Indonesians were the first people to introduce Islam to Australia. In the early 16th century, Makassan fishermen from the East Indonesian archipelago were the first Muslims to visit Australia and trade with the indigenous Aboriginal community. Muslim immigrants from British Empire countries traveled to Australia as sailors with the early fleets of European settlers. In the 19th century, Afghan Muslim camel drivers played an important role in the exploration and the opening up of the interior of the Australian continent. It's a curious fact that these camels adjusted so well to life in Australia that we now have so many that we export them to the Middle East in significant numbers. Today, Islam is one of the fastest growing faiths in Australia, and Muslims are a vital and integral part of the rich mosaic of Australian society. Mosques, Islamic schools, Muslim community centres, student associations, halal butchers and restaurants are found in every state in Australia. Australian Muslims are members of parliament doctors, lawyers, academics, diplomats, police officers, members of the defence force, entrepreneurs, shopkeepers and labourers. Together, Australians have built a nation which today, by any international standard of comparison, must be judged a success. Within a period of time that is short in historical perspective, Australia has been enlarged in capacities, talents and outlooks by millions of men and women from every corner of the globe. And as time passes, we are becoming more and more diverse. This diversity has added to the definition of what it means to be Australian. Multiculturalism is the word that we use to capture our love of the things that bind us together and our respect for the diversity that enriches us. Multiculturalism was officially embraced as government policy in Australia in the 1970s, with the arrival of significant numbers of migrants from non-European cultural backgrounds. As Australia's late former Prime Minister Malcolm Fraser who was a fierce international opponent of apartheid in South Africa, once said, it is important to note that we have not simply grafted an ethnic dimension onto an otherwise unchanged conception of ourselves. There has been a fundamental reappraisal of the established way of seeing Australia. Australia's multiculturalism means that everyone in Australian society should have a right to express their cultural heritage and identity, and that we can leave room for multiple expressions of Australianness. Integration is key. The parallels here with Indonesia are striking. Indonesia, too, highly values its diversity and multicultural population. And like Australia, Indonesia is multi-ethnic, multi-faith, and multicultural. The foundational philosophy, philosophy of the country, Pancasila, reflects this diversity 
and protects it. The Australian government's 2017 multicultural policy statement, Multicultural Australia, United, Strong, Successful, reiterates shared values, rights, and responsibilities as cornerstones of Australian multiculturalism. The statement rejects racism and affirms the value of mutual respect. Australia's diversity is at the heart of our national identity and is intrinsic to our history and our character. We are an immigration nation. You can't look in the mirror and say Australians only look like this. Australians look like every race, every face, every background because we define ourselves and our nation by our commitment to shared political values, democracy, freedom and the rule of law. The glue that binds us together is mutual respect, a recognition that each of us is entitled to the same respect, the same dignity, the same opportunities. The mutuality of that respect is of critical importance. Australian support for multiculturalism has not only involved political support at the level of principle, but also institutional expression through particular policies and programs, including through settlement services and multicultural grants. Ultimately, the responsibility for multiculturalism rests not just on the government, but on the community at large. And in the Australian community over the past few decades, multicultural awareness and practice have indeed spread at a growing pace, and ideas and impetus for change continue to flow from individuals, groups, and organizations. We live in a world of increasing intolerance and disharmony, and so I think that what we have managed to do in Australia is a remarkable achievement. We are sitting on a multicultural gold mine. Our diversity of faiths and colors and creeds are not a threat to who we are, it is the true essence of what makes us a modern and vibrant nation. I could never have imagined when I was living under apartheid that one day I would have the honor to serve as an Australian ambassador. However, my personal story is only one of millions of stories that make up the patchwork of modern Australia, a country that has been enriched by people of every background and tradition, each contributing their own unique and special thread to the multicultural fabric of our society. Our achievement in creating this diverse nation is not an accident. It has been carefully crafted and we must not take it for granted. You have to continue nurturing it. I would never claim that Australia is perfect. Like every country, we have our own set of issues and problems to deal with. But we have made large strides in the right direction and I'm proud that our nation looks outward and into the future. That we have a national story that embraces diversity, whether we are black or white, Asian, indigenous, or small, Christian, Jewish, or Hindu. Unfortunately, wherever we are in the world, there will always be a small minority who are unable to tolerate or appreciate diversity, and who are threatened by those who do not conform to their worldview. These people view multiculturalism as a threat. What took place in Christchurch earlier this year, for example, was an abhorrent terrorist attack based on an ideology of hate. As Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison said, the Christchurch attack was an attack on all peace-loving peoples, on all innocent peoples, and that's why we can all stand together in support of our Muslim brothers and sisters who were the specific targets of this attack. He also said, Muslim Australians are us, and an attack on one faith is an attack on all faiths. Religious freedom is not just an inalienable right as free citizens. It is important to the very cohesion of our society. It is for many Australians impossible to separate their faith from their culture. And the Australian government is committed, strongly committed, to ensuring our migrant and faith communities continue to feel welcome and safe in Australia. The government has reiterated its determination to always protect and defend our people's right to practice peacefully their religion without fear. It is incumbent on all of us to work together against extremism and to take sure, to take care to ensure that our public debates do not encourage the very divisions between faiths and cultures that extremists seek to create. The aim of extremists, including those committing violence through a warped and nihilistic interpretation of religion, is to divide us and to turn our citizens against each other. We are stronger when we stand together. A strong and trusting relationship between the government and communities is crucial to ensuring the right messages reach the hearts and minds of those who might be vulnerable to propaganda of terror groups. By promoting and nurturing multiculturalism within Australia, we are building a more dynamic, more inclusive society that fosters the health and prosperity of all Australians, no matter who we are and where we came from. The safety and security of our country requires 
social harmony and unity. And Prime Minister Morrison recently spoke about the continued importance of strengthening our social fabric in finding a bigger place for us and a smaller place for the idea of them. As our world becomes more disruptive and unfortunately more polarized, countries like Indonesia and Australia need to seize the opportunity presented by the diversity of our communities. We have to unleash the full potential of our people and draw on the wide range of skills and experiences that our culturally diverse populations have to offer. My introduction to Australia at the age of eight taught me that Australia is a welcoming place where everyone belongs. And I am always touched by the warmth of the Indonesian people. Much is always made of the differences between us, but consider this, both of our countries are very diverse. Each of us is home to different languages, cultures, religions, and ways of life. Australia sees this as a strength and an asset, and so too does Indonesia. Together, we can be a beacon to the world. Thank you. Terima kasih. Terima kasih.